Hi, welcome to the Essential Grid tutorials. This is the second video in our series on setting up Essential Grid for your WordPress website. I'm Sarah Oates and I'm from Endure Web Studios and I'm excited to be here with you. So in our last series or in our last video, we set up our Essential Grid and we registered it. Now we're ready to start having a look at how to get it all set up. So the next thing that you need to work out is are you setting up like a homepage for your blog posts or are you wanting to make like a image library, for example. Um, in this web page that I've got here, you can see both examples going on. So we've got what we've called a blog, but it's not necessarily a blog. It's basically showing photo shoots. So this is a photographer's web page and we've used blog posts to be able to show um, an entire photo shoot. So each different one is from a different photo shoot and when you actually go into that particular one, then you see all of the images from that photo shoot. So photographers often want to show off like a particular photo shoot and they might have 20 or 30 images from that one photo shoot. For some reason my internet's running a little bit slow in this moment. So when you come in here, you can see all of the images from that particular photo shoot. All looks lovely, but the photographer also wanted the option to be able to show off a portfolio. So this gives the option where you just have images themselves. And these images aren't from within the actual blog post, they're separate. And this way, someone can come to the web page and they can just see, you know, the very best images. So the photographer is able to just show off a few photos from each of the um, photo shoots or maybe they don't even want to include some sometimes. This gives that option to just show by photos and then when you click on them then you can um, go through and look at the images in a light box. So depending on which way you're wanting to go, if you're wanting to do the light box photo thing then skip forward to the next video but if you're wanting to set up a blog post you need to actually get your posts already set up so that they're good to go once you set up your grids. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So, sorry about that. If you come over to the back end of your web page and you have a look, you, you will have up here posts. Now, for this particular one, I've set mine up as projects. Don't let that make you freak out if you're thinking, well, I haven't set mine up as projects or I don't even have a thing that says projects. Projects is an element that was created by the Elegant Themes team, which I have happened to have used. I've used Divi for this, um, but it functions exactly the same as posts. So don't worry too much if you don't have projects. I've chosen to use projects for this example in case in the future they're wanting to set up a blog and then I don't have to set up a like a subdomain or anything. Um, but it functions exactly the same. So don't worry too much about that. As you can see under posts, it says all posts, all new categories. Categories and tags is the main things that we're going to look at right now and categories and tags is exactly the same. So in your projects, every project needs to have a category or a tag. Your essential grid will not pick up the blog post unless it has a category or a tag. So even if um, you're setting it up and you don't need categories and you don't need tags, there's no functional reason that you need it, then give them all the exact same category. That's fine. They need to have a category though or it won't get pulled in. So come into here and then start to get them set up. This means that you can also do filtering within your grid in the future. So if you're wanting to do filtering, this is also how you do that. So you can give them categories or you can give them tags. People tend to use them in different ways. It's totally up to you. You can pick which way you want to do it. I generally think categories can be used for like when you're wanting to do the filtering and tags is more like for blog posts so that you can have lots and lots of tags for one particular blog post. Whereas categories, you might just have one or maybe, I don't know, two or three categories, whereas you might have 10 tags that all describe the particular blog post. So I'm using categories, but equally you could use tags if you wanted to. So the first thing you need to do is actually get your categories set up and know which categories you're going to use. Um, so I already have mine set up. You come into categories section and as you can see, I've already got some set up here on the side, but this over here on the left is how you get them set up. So we're going to create a new one. We're going to call it bunnies. Maybe you took a million photos of bunnies and you want to add that in. 
or let's say bunnies and butterflies. So I can explain something to you. The name is able to have spaces in it. So that's totally fine if you wanna have spaces, all good, but the slug can't have spaces. So the reason these two are different is because the name can be displayed, whereas the slug usually is just to do with the URL and URLs can't have spaces. So in this example, you would either just say bunnies, a shortened version, or you might say bunnies and butterflies. The most important thing is that it doesn't have any spaces. You can just have it sitting on its own. All of these are just sitting on their own, or you can sit it under one of the other ones. So for this example, we'll sit it under children. Uh, you could do a description if you want to, but you don't really need to. And then click add new category and it comes over here on the side. Um, now the next thing to do is come back into your posts or your projects, doesn't matter, either one, and then get them set up. So there's two ways that you can add a category or a tag. You can do it within the actual post itself. So if you come in here on the right hand side you can see the categories and you can see the tags. So for this particular one you can see that I've already added families but you can add as many as you want and all you have to do is tick them or you can add down here bunnies, butterflies or whatever tags that you're wanting to add to them and then you just click add and that will add it to it. The advantage that I see with categories is that um, you can't make accidental spelling errors so down here with tags if in one blog post you used bunnies and in another blog post you use bunny then they're not actually going to come into the grid correctly. You need to make sure they're exactly the same every single time. So categories is good because it's a bit more foolproof that you can't just accidentally miss an S or um, something like that. It's going to be the same and all you have to do is do the tick box. So you just add that, click update, and then the category or the tag is already added. Another way you can do it, if you've already got all of your blog posts and you don't want to click into each individual one, which is a really slow process, then you can do it here. So equally it would be in the post section. All you have to do is hover over and then click on quick edit. And again, you've got your categories and you've got your tags. So you can just tick it here or type in with commas in between and then click update and go through all of them. Make sure that they've all got a category or a tag associated with it. And then you're good to go. You're ready to start getting set up with your grid. So in the next video, we're going to have a look at getting set up um, and some of the basic things that you need to do when you're first setting up a grid. So hopefully you're finding this useful and hopefully we'll see you at the next video. Thanks.